This is Xander, a Smokesman who's currently the rank one player on the North American leaderboard. His mastery over the controller role has allowed him to single-handedly carry himself to the coveted status of rank one, even though controller is perceived as one of the weakest roles to carry from. Now in this video, we're gonna be explaining the controller role in four different levels, starting from beginner level and making our way up to pro. Let's start off with Zytroy, who's ranked bronze and is playing Brimstone on Haven. In the second round of this match, Zytroy initially holds C-Long until two of the attackers appear on the minimap towards mid. This is our hero's cue to rotate to Garage in order to get in range for a smoke on mid window. But this is where our hero makes one of the most common mistakes that beginner level controllers make. If we pay close attention to the smoke that was placed, we can see that they had placed it quite deep in the window. If we recreate the same placement for this window smoke, we can clearly see that there are some pretty large gaps on the left and right of this smoke. This issue of placing smokes too deep on windows where it leaves a gap usually stems from a lack of awareness of where the edges of their smoke are as well as where the edges of the window are. If you're ever unsure if your smoke is covering the entirety of a window, such as this one in mid, if you zoom in closely, you can see that Brimstone's tablet actually shows the edges of the window. So always line up the edges of your smoke so that it lines up with the edges of the window. We can see that this even applies to the window in garage. Since the window in garage is not as wide as the window in mid, you can place your smoke a bit deeper and it'll still cover the entirety of the window. So always make sure that when you're smoking windows of any kind, always ensure that they're placed just deep enough to cover all of it. If you're ever confused on where to place your smokes, we offer courses on all the controllers on our website at skillcap.com. We recently just released our newly improved Brimstone course that covers everything you're ever going to need to know to become the best Brimstone that you can be. Now, many of the topics, such as playing around your smokes and where to place them on the attack or defense side for every map, can carry over to many of the other controllers in the game. So it's a great watch for anyone who's looking to study up on the controller role. And all of it is backed up by rank up and so if you don't improve while actively using our service, you're going to get your money back and there's no questions asked. Now we do this because it's very important to us that our service works. And if it's not working, you honestly just shouldn't even pay for it. So if you're really looking to excel, be sure to check out Skillcapped using the link below and we'll help you level up your game. At least in this round, this mistake didn't cost them anything, but the misplay afterward unfortunately did. If we let the round continue, we can see that our hero has chosen to hold Garage by standing in the dead center of the room. After getting a bit startled by some footsteps that were on the right side of the doors, they fall victim to a phoenix who just runs in without a care in the world. In Valorant, especially as a controller, how you position yourself is incredibly important. The issue in this round is that they have no easy path to escape or any cover to play around. A strength that many controllers have is that their utility is quite strong at being used to reactively delay enemies. But this isn't possible when you position yourself in a way where you aren't able to retreat to stay alive long enough to use said utility. Now a great alternative that our hero could have done is to play this angle in Garage Window. In this spot, our hero could have easily been able to retreat back to cover when needed and had easy access to using their smoke or molly to delay any further pushes. This same concept can be applied to the other controllers as well. Omen can retreat to use their paranoia, Viper can retreat to use her molly, and Astra can fall back to use their gravity well. Even just placing your smoke at garage doors after falling back can aid in deterring attackers from continuing to push. Having some kind of plan with your positioning so that you can reactively use your utility in a safe manner is something that all controllers must understand. For our intermediate level, we have Baron, who's ranked plat 3 and is playing Omen on Split. Let's take a look at the second round of this match. Our hero's team had just won the pistol round and is planning to hit B site. Our hero makes their way to the other side of B main and begins to place a smoke towards heaven. However, much like our beginner level hero, they've misplaced the smoke so that there's a gap that the defenders can peek through. This mistake is honestly a bit more understandable to make though, because smoking B heaven requires a decent level of precision to ensure that there's no gaps. A quick and easy tip for all you smoke players is that when placing your smokes, always double check where the edges of the smoke are with your mini map. If we take a closer look at the mini map as our hero placed this smoke, we can see that the top edge of the smoke isn't touching the other edge of heaven. Here's an example of what it should look like when placing a proper smoke for B heaven. 
But this isn't the main issue that's honestly holding our hero back here. Take a moment to try and answer this question for yourself. What was the main issue with this smoke? The answer is the timing at which our hero chooses to deploy their smoke. Looking at the minimap, we can see that our heroes Sova and Breach are in these positions when our hero decides to place their smoke. As you can see, they aren't really even close to pushing into B site yet. Our hero had made the mistake of throwing their heaven smoke too early because their teammates aren't even in a position to begin their B site execute. On top of this, you can see that the Sova and Breach are taking their time to use their utility before even entering the site which slows down the execute even more. If our hero had taken a moment to look at the minimap to get a better idea of what type of pacing their teammates were going at, they could have placed their smoke at a timing that much better matches their teammates push. We can also see the same exact issue of using utility just a bit too early with this omen flash. The Sova and Breach are still positioned in B main rather than pushing up into the main choke point. The flash timing we want to look for in this situation is when our teammates are in the middle of this B main choke so that the enemies are blinded right before our teammates peek into them. Where you use your utility is so important, but the time at which you use it is equally as important when it comes to being an effective controller. Now to really drive this point home, if we continue the clip, our hero's team floods into B-Site and it's a chaotic brawl, just nuts. After finding a frag onto the gecko and retreating from a fight with the Reyna, our hero peeks the right side of Pillar and unfortunately peeks right into both the Sky and the Phoenix at the same time, then dies. Now a key detail here is that the Phoenix had killed him with a Marshal from Heaven. The Phoenix had a clear view of our hero because the Heaven smoke had dissipated. This is where everything comes full circle. Because if we look back at the timing of the heaven smoke that was thrown at the beginning of the round, if our hero had just delayed their smoke timing for heaven so it was more aligned with the pacing and positioning of their teammates, this smoke would have still been up when they chose to peak the right side of pillar. Our hero's heaven smoke could have been up for an extra four to five seconds for free if they had just paid attention to this mistake. So, for all you controller mains, whenever you're using your utility, always look at your minimap to get a better understanding of one, where your utility is actually landing, and two, where your teammates are so that you can better time your utility with their pacing. For our advanced level, we have Mabel, who's ranked Immortal and is playing Astra on Pearl. Let's take a look at the very first round of this match to see how an immortal level controller stacks up to the previous levels. Before the round starts, our hero's team is poised for a B-side execute, which is quite standard on Pearl. One of the luxuries that comes with playing Astra is having the ability to smoke chokes for a brief moment by pulling back your placed stars. This technique is incredibly useful for Pearl because when pushing the top of B long, you can use this pullback smoke to momentarily give your team some concealment as you cross to the mini screen. This is quite annoying for the defenders too, because instead of having to hold one single angle to cover all of B-Long, you now have multiple different angles that you and your teammates can peek from, which makes the defenders have to change their crosshair placement to deal with all of these different possibilities. This can also be done by a couple of other controllers, such as Viper with her Poison Orb or Harbor with his Cascade. If you're playing Omen or Brimstone, you can always ask your Jet or Cypher to smoke this cross since their smokes last much shorter than yours, therefore aren't as valuable to the side execute itself. After our hero's team has pushed past this initial angle, they position themselves behind Pillar to activate Astral Form safely. Mabel then presses a star for Heaven and Street. Both stars are placed with no obvious gaps, so the defenders aren't able to freely peek around the smokes. Also, our hero had activated the smokes at a great time to match the pacing of their teammates. The initial smoke was a hair too late, but it's not too big of a deal. They activate their smokes in the correct order of Heaven first, then Street, because Heaven is going to be the first angle that their teammates will make contact with. With the smokes up, Mabel moves on in to help fight with their teammates on site, and the pistol round is swiftly won. This is a perfect round on how a controller should play when they're executing a site with their teammates. When you get to the advanced level of play, a theme that many controller mains miss is the concept of conditioning. At higher levels of play, players become much better at recognizing patterns, specifically where you use your abilities and what that might mean. 
If we take a look at multiple different rounds in this match, we can see that every time our hero is at B long, they use this pullback star to cross B long. And every time that our hero is not B long, they don't place this pullback star. This reason is why this is a mistake that the defenders on B site now have a clear signal of when the attackers plan to go B site or not. All they have to do is see if our hero places the pullback star on B long, and they essentially know where the attackers are likely going to go. Now, the defenders can just rotate off B site, knowing that there's no threat to B because our hero is basically telling them, hey guys, we're not going to B site, just with how they're using their utility. You want to condition your opponent by placing this cross smoke as often as you can so that you can deny information and keep your intentions of where you plan to go in ambiguous. Now, as a mix-up, our hero could have placed this pullback star B long while the rest of their team goes to A site. And then if the defenders decide to rotate off B site, our hero can lurk into B site while simultaneously helping with the A site execute because they can place their stars from the other side of the map when they need it. And speaking of lurking, this is another aspect of the game that our hero was failing to capitalize on. Now, as we mentioned before, Astra's abilities and many other controllers can use their smokes from quite a far range, allowing them the opportunity to lurk more often than other characters who are required for the side execute, such as initiators. If you're able to get your smokes placed before you die during your lurk, you've pretty much done your job. So with this newfound freedom, finding lurks is how many controller mains are able to solo low carry games. Our hero throughout this entire attacking side only truly lurks once. This also ties in with the other concept of conditioning we went over earlier because another aspect of pattern recognition that advanced players will keep tabs on are who are the agents that do lurk. Since our hero in almost all the rounds is playing either with their entire team or paired with their cypher, the enemy has placed our hero into a category of player who does not lurk. So they've been conditioned to know that Astra is highly likely to be playing with the team. But our hero can use this to their advantage by adding in more lurks, which subverts the defender's expectation of what our hero has been doing throughout the half. The more you play with the team, the more unexpected it is to lurk. And the more you lurk, the slower the rotations will be from the defenders because they have to be much more careful, which makes them much slower at helping against side executes. You can't fully commit to only playing with the team or lurking though. However, if you do find the perfect balance of these two, you're gonna make it feel like your presence is everywhere on the map all at the same time. For our pro level, we have Xander, whose mastery of the controller role has allowed him to reach rank one on the North American leaderboard. Now we're going to be breaking down a couple of rounds from his games to see what makes him able to reach this achievement while playing one of the most supportive roles in the game. For this first round, we're going to be watching Xander's Omen on Split. Close under hell. Under you guys, under you. Under. Okay. Wait, come close. Let's close. close. Let's say, what's he As the round starts, Xander jiggle peeks A main for any info on where the attackers might be. As the round progresses, it becomes more clear that the attackers are planning to hit the B site. Xander begins to rotate through CT spawn and starts to aim his smokes toward B main. A minor detail here that many controller mains aren't doing is moving at the same times as they aim their smoke. Lower level players a lot of the time will just stand still in order to have more accuracy when it comes to placing their smokes. Now, once you get to these higher levels, the speed at which you rotate can make or break being able to defend a bomb site. So after placing a smoke for B main, Xander actually notices that the attackers have already pushed past the B main choke. This is when Xander employs a mid side smoke to further help his sky. These mid side smokes are exceptionally strong at helping teammates who are defending on sites where the attackers have already already pushed out of the main choke point. The reason why this specific smoke that Xander placed here at Pillar is so strong is because it forces the attackers to make an unfavorable decision. 
They're limited to a few options here. The first being rotating around the smoke to wrap the pillar from the other side, making the attackers have to deal with the heaven and hell angles while also taking a much longer path to plant the spike. The second option of just waiting inside or outside the smoke for the smoke to dissipate, which stalls them from planting the spike as well. Or the third option of peeking out of the smoke, which forces them into an unfavorable duel because they expose themselves to multiple angles all at the same time. Because of the nature of this smoke, it gives the sky way more space to work with now because the attackers have to be much more careful when scaling into B-site. Some other common mid-site smokes that accomplish similar goals are this smoke on A-site split, this smoke on C-site haven, and this smoke on A-site ascent. When the round dwindles down into a 2v2, we can see that Xander and his Sage drop into B-Site while using the same mid-site smoke to give them enough space to get new angles for the upcoming duel. His Sage pushes into the smoke and dies, but Xander follows up and gets a kill onto the Omen. Unfortunately, the smoke dissipates at an unlucky timing in the chamber frag Xander. But you can still see how this smoke almost gave Xander the chance of winning the 1v2 momentarily because it gave him concealment from the chamber while he had an isolated fight with the enemy Omen. If you or your teammates are ever defending a site and the enemies have already breached past the main choke point, use these mid-side smokes to find advantages in the midst of the chaos. Now let's hop into the fourth round of this match to see how Xander puts on a masterclass on how to clutch post-plant scenarios. The controller role has to be one of the strongest roles when it comes to clutching these spike diffuse situations, and you're about to see why. Legend. Oh, I have no gun. And a flash. Oh, I can find it myself. I've got your trail. Oh my god. Last player standing. 69. One enemy remaining. There's a bomb. Not ready yet. Xander finds himself in a 2v2 situation and the spike is planted on A site. As his sky peeks out, she dies to the enemy sky. Now knowing her location, he pulls out his flash and blinds the sky for a quick trade frag. Then, while looking for the spike's location, smokes the middle of A site, effectively smoking off the spike if the viper is located somewhere towards A main or hell. With plenty of time left on the spike, he goes for a fake defuse. The purpose of this fake defuse is to see if the viper will give any information as to where her location is because now she's a bit panicked that Xander may be defusing the spike. As Xander repositions to swap his gun after the fake defuse, the enemy Viper begins to fire her weapon through the smoke onto the spike in hopes of hitting Xander if he was defusing. Now that Viper has revealed her general location due to her firing her weapon, Xander has a better mental image of the spacing between him and the Viper. With the smoke still up as he goes back to the spike and commits to defusing, a minor but extremely critical detail here is that while sticking the defuse, he actually defuses the spike from the very edge of the defuse radius. This may not seem like a big deal, but this is insanely helpful at ensuring you don't get instantly headshot through the smoke while you're defusing. This is because when people are firing at the diffuser through a smoke, they usually are aiming their bullets directly above the spike rather than to the sides. Using this tactic, Xander successfully gets the half defuse. After hearing the Viper make a footstep which may indicate that she's about to peek out of the smoke, he stops defusing the spike and prepares his crosshair placement for a fight. He fake defuses the spike once more to see if the enemy Viper will push through the smoke, and the likelihood of the Viper pushing is even greater now because he was able to defuse the spike to half. This causes the spike to make a higher pitched noise, announcing to the Viper that if she doesn't peak the next three and a half seconds, she's gonna lose the round. And as expected, the Viper swings and Xander lands a slick headshot. Controllers having the ability to smoke the spike to deny information on whether or not it's being diffused gives them insane leverage at winning these post plant clutches. By using his controller toolkit and game sense, Xander was able to have full control during this clutch. Be more like Xander, and you're gonna find yourself climbing the ranks with controller in no time.